Hey, what's up guys? Today we are going to be talking about this module, the DS3231 real-time clock. And I know I've touched on it before in some other projects, but I wanted to take a more in-depth look at it today. So if we look at the clock here, we can see that it has two separate ICs on it. Let's see if I can get the lighting just right so that we can read them. Okay, the first one is the DS3231, which is the real-time clock. And the second one, doesn't want to play as nice, is an Atmel 24C32N uh, EEPROM. And the DS3231 uses that EEPROM. To store the date, the time, and all of the information that the clock generates. Now this is an I squared C device. As you can see here over from this main pin header, we have SCL serial clock and SDA serial data. It is 5 volt tolerant, so you can hook the VCC up to 5 volt and the ground to ground. Now the chip has a uh, internal oscillator, which you can read the output of on this pin marked SQW square wave. And it also has a 32K oscillator, which can be read on the 32K pin. But I don't know yeah, how much use anybody would really make of those. It also has an internal alarm clock and a temperature sensor. Now these, this main pin header over here also has a pass through over here to this side. So if you're not interested in using the square wave or the 32K pin, you know, you can come over here, uh, solder in a pin header and just use the I squared C and the power pins. Now you're gonna see right here, these three jumpers a0, A1, and A2, those can be used for setting the I squared C address of the pin. Other than that, on this side, we have a couple of resistors, a couple of capacitors, there's an LED. Now on the other side, the only thing we have is a CR2032 battery to hold the memory for the clock. Now hooking this up to your Arduino is relatively simple. I'm going to show you how we do that and how we put in the settings for the time date and also how to read them. So let's go take a look at that right now. Alright guys, we are using the DS3231 library that was designed by Eric Ayers and upgraded by John Hubert. And if you just type DS3231 into your library manager, you can download this with no problem. So if we come down here, we can see the functions that are available to us with this library, including the get function, and the set functions, which you can see down in here. Now we also have the get temperature function, and we have the alarm functions. And finally we have the oscillator functions. So if we turn on the oscillator by saying enable oscillator and then true and then now here we either need to tell it whether or not we're using it with the battery or we only want the oscillator on when it's getting power 
and finally the frequency which can be 0, 1, 2, or 3 and you can see how those correspond here to the different frequencies. Now I've got it set right now for 3 so we get a frequency of 8.192 kilohertz. Let's take a look at that in the, uh, in the uh, oscilloscope window. Okay, here we are looking at the oscillator output on that square wave pin. We're at 50 microseconds per division and 200 millivolts per division. And if we measure DOS frequency, A little jumpy there, but you can see we're at 8.088 kilohertz. And I totally forget what I set the frequency at. So let's have a look here. In our libraries. Yes, 3231. And we look at the header file. eight point one two nine kilohertz so let's go back into the scope and see if I can't set it a little better That's about as close as I can get it, but that is close enough. And we can also measure the voltage. And you see we're getting 457 millivolts out of that. So that's the square wave output. Kind of cool. So you see how it outputs a square wave at any one of these frequencies. Now we also have the 32k kilohertz which turns on the 32k kilohertz pin and you know you can use that for whatever you want and it has a couple of functions here decimal to binary coded decimal binary coded decimal to decimal read controller byte and write controller byte so those are our library functions. Pretty simple. Let's look at how we can set the time. So this is a little script, sketch, whatever you want to call it, for setting the time on your DS3231. So we need to include the DS3231 and the wire library. Then we have a little library call here where we access the DS3231 library creating an instance called clock. So everything that we're going to do from now on needs to start with clock dot and then the function. Now we have some Boolean variables here. Century false, 12 hour, PM, day, hour, minute, second, bits. A, D, Y, A, 12 hour, A, P, M. And then we have bytes to store the year, the month, the date, the day of the week, the hour, the minute, and the seconds. So to set our clock with this little script, what we need to do is put in the information. So we're going to set our seconds at 0, 0, which resets everything. And for right now, our minutes are 2. Our hour is 12, day of the week is 3, month is 3, day is 28, year is 17, and we'll send that out. Okay, we're uploading. 
and we can check the serial port here. And you see we get day of the week three, 120200, 28th day, third month, year 17. So pretty simple for setting the clock. Now let's look at the script to view the time. Again, if you're going to put this in any of your sketches, you need to include wire in DS3231, and you need to create an instance of clock. Now down here in your setup, you know, of course we need wire begin. Now I've enabled the oscillator. You don't have to do that, but that's the command to enable the oscillator. One, only when it's being powered from external source and that 8.1 to 9 kilohertz. Then we've created a little function here called read DS3231. So we create our variables here to store everything. And the first thing we're going to do is grab the temperature. So we say temperature equals clock dot get temperature. And then we just print everything out. Serial print hour minute, second, new line, blah, 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 everything like that. So let's send it out. Okay, we've uploaded it, and you can see it's using only 16% of our storage space and only 19% of our dynamic memory. So that makes it an excellent candidate to throw into any of your sketches. And there you have it. So you see, if you wanted to throw a clock into any of your sketches, I mean, it's great to have a clock. You know, you can add just about anything. You know, you have your libraries, and you have your library constructor there. And basically, all you need to do is print out the information that you've created. It's pretty simple. And the DS3231 uh, module is relatively cheap. It's around $5 from Amazon. You'll probably get it cheaper from some young guy. Anyway, I hope you guys like this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next time.